five, uh, is supper at 5.30 or the seminar at 6.30. So you can go out as long as you would want, but uh, the scheduled time is basically be back in time for supper. So uh, it's open-ended for you. Um, what we're going to do here, we're going to have a short training, and then we're going to pray together. We're going to distribute everyone out into teams. We're going to give each person a map. And then we're going to give you your books, and then we're going to go out into the community, okay? We'll be reaching out in Durham and Topsham today. So I'm excited to see how the Lord will lead. But uh, before we get into it, we'll just have a quick word of prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we, we thank you so much for this opportunity to serve you. Father, we thank you that we can go out into the community and invite people to this amazing series that you'll be having led out by Dan Cerns every evening. Father, we pray that you would line up divine appointments for us, and as we do the short training, please equip us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, how to share the three angels' messages in 30 seconds. So, um, before we get into the training, I want to just share, let me see here. I'm on the wrong. I want to share with you some quotes. I had the, the privilege of putting these quotes together before camp meeting started. And I have never seen these quotes before. Uh, before I can put them, I'm pulling them up on the screen for you so you can read them as well. I had the wrong PowerPoint. Let me see here. Okay, Okay. here we go. I'm glad I have it here, because these are some you'll want to, once, they're, once I show them on the screen, you're going to want to take note of these references. All right. <clears throat> so in connection, let me reconnect here. Okay, as it's loading, I'll go ahead and read the quote, but it says, in connection with our camp meetings in past years, God's servants have improved many precious opportunities for instructing our people in practical methods of presenting the saving truths of the third angel's message to their friends and acquaintances. Many have returned home from these annual gatherings to labor with greater zeal and intelligence than hitherto. It would be pleasing to God if far more of this practical instruction were given the church members who attend our camp meetings than has usually uh, get, been given in years past. Our general workers and our brethren and sisters in every conference should remember that one of the objects of our annual gatherings is that all may gain a knowledge of practical methods of personal missionary work. And that is just an amazing quote, and there's so many things that we could train on. And yesterday I shared this quote about, you know, co-laboring together with God. And, you know, we talked about how that tied in with Revelation chapter 18, 1, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And she says that one of the principal agencies he has ordained for our use is the printed page. What I didn't share with you yesterday is the remainder of the quote. She continues to say, in the same context, in the same paragraph, in our schools and sanitariums, in our home churches, and where else? Where else? And particularly in our annual camp meetings. So we have a direct quote from the Spirit of Prophecy that we should not only be training a personal missionary work, but that one of the ways that he wants us to get involved in personal missionary work during camp meeting is through the distribution of the printed page. She says, with patient diligence, um, chosen workers must instruct our people how to approach unbelievers in a kindly, winning way and how to place in their hands literature in which he, uh, the truth for this time is presented with clearness and power. Isn't that exciting? That's exciting. And then the last quote, the last quote, what can be the benefit of distributing literature through and during our camp meetings? We're told at some of our camp meetings, strong companies of workers have been organized to go out into the city and to this, its uh, suburbs to distribute literature and invite people to the meetings. By this means, hundreds of persons have been secured as regular attendants. We must take 
every justifiable means to bring the light before the people, those who are in training for work in the cause in any line should improve every opportunity to work at the camp meeting. So it is our hope that when we go out into the field today, that as a result, we would have people from the community coming to camp meeting. Amen? Amen. And that is why we are here. So I want to do a short training, a very, very short training. Before we tell you what to say, the the biggest uh, thing that will equip you when going door to door is if you know some of the book. How many of you have read all or at least parts of The Great Controversy? Okay, then you're all qualified to share it, amen? So um, the more you know your book, the better of a canvasser you will be. That's the, that's the saying and how it goes. And in this packet, you'll have a flyer advertising the meeting. You'll have a great controversy in between. And a mental, um, some will have a mental health magazine. And others will have an Eight Laws of Health magazine. So it's basically a packet on health and, uh, and uh, an advertisement for the series and the great controversy, okay? And so what do you say when you go to the door? I'm just going to give you a super crash course, how to share the th- uh, three angels' messages in 30 seconds. You just say, hello, my name is, whatever your name is, we're delivering a gift into the community. It's as simple as that. You knock on the door, hello, my name is Johnny, we're delivering a gift into the community. Can you say it with me? Hello, my name is? And we are delivering a gift in the community. It's that simple. You don't have to overthink it. Now, as soon as you give the introduction, the very next thing that you do is you put the book in their hands. That's right, Cole Porter's right. This is one of the most fundamental principles of literature evangelism. You don't ask. You assume that they're interested. And so when you say, hi, my name is Johnny. We're delivering a gift into the community. And you You just extend your arm and hand it to them. The natural response of someone when when they hear the word gift and they see your arm extended is to receive it. They have to go against the natural pathways of their mind to say, no, I'm not really interested in this. Does this mean that they'll never say no? No. That You'll have some no's, but I'm telling you, when you place the book in their hands, that is 70% of the battle or more in this work. As, as long as they have the books in their hands, it's going to increase your chances of them not rejecting you. So don't skip this step. Don't ask. Don't say, hi, I have a gift for you. Would you like it? Or, hi, I have a gift for you. Are you interested? Just say, hey, I have a gift for you, and hand it to them, okay? And so it's as simple as that. Now, after they have the book in their hand or the packet in their hand, there's gonna ha- you're going to have about four responses. One is going to be, oh, thank you so much. The other one's going to be, and they're just going to close the door, and that's it. Oh, thank you so much, and they close the door. The second one will be, well, thank you. What is this all about? What's in here? And then the third one is going to be a thank you, but there's kind of a pause, an awkward space in the conversation. And then the fourth one is, in some way or another, I'm not interested, okay? In the case that someone says, thank you, what is it? And thank you, there's a pause. I want you to do the same thing. Begin to explain the packet, okay? When someone says thank you or they receive the gift and there's that natural, there's that awkward pause, if you allow it to exist for too long, that pause will often turn into a rejection, So I always say, as soon as you hand the book, as long as they give you time, explain it immediately. Don't, don't, we call it steamrolling. You don't want to, hello, my name is Johnny, here's a gift for you. And before you even get in their hands, you just blurt out everything about it. You you know, let it be natural. Hello, my name is Johnny, we're delivering a gift into the community. What you have in your hands is, and then you explain the packet. But the question is, well, how do you explain the packet, right? So after you give them the book, you, well, you, hey, we're delivering a gift into the community. You hand them the packet. This is uh, many different ways that, uh, sorry that the screen turned off. I'll plug it here back in again. But there's many different ways that you can canvas this. I would encourage you, we have two main things showing. You have the health magazine and the, um, the flyer for the evangelistic meeting. In this health, um, like I said, there's going to be two magazines, but one of them is mental health. You see that blue one? That's the blue magazine. That's mental health. If you have that packet, it, it talks about 
how to, it basically offers help to those who struggle with depression, anxiety, and stress. So what's the, what's the magazine about? Pretty simple, right? So if you hand them the pack, you say, you know what, we're offering, you know, this, um, you can say, hey, we're delivering a gift into the community. You hand them the book and you say, we have a resource that helps people who struggle with depression, anxiety, or stress. Very simple. That's the health magazine side. And then if you have an Eight Laws of Health magazine, you could say something very similar. You know, we're giving away um, health resources that help people have an abundant life or to live longer, happier, and healthier. Something simple. You know, you don't have to overthink it. Uh, if at the end of the day you don't remember anything, if you don't even remember your name, remember this, that the health magazine is just a free health resource that we're sharing in the community. If you don't have anything else to say about it, all right? So that's <clears throat> as simple as that. Now, you might get advanced, and I always like to do this when people give me time. After I tell them about the mental health magazine, I'll ask them, do you or anyone you know struggle with any of these things? Depression, anxiety, or stress. And I can't tell you over and over again the wisdom of the Lord that when he told us that our health publications should go out with our publications on present truth and how it would break down the barrier and open the way and it would be an entering wedge, you could see the wisdom of the Lord when you introduce health and then you ask a question like that. I have had so many people who tell me that they were on the verge of committing suicide when I was right there on their front door, that they were depressed for months, that they were lonely, that they lost a loved one, that they lost, you know, or that their family is going through a divorce and they're struggling. And it was at that moment I was able to tell them about the hope in the great controversy. Amen? Amen. So, you know, some people give you more day or time to talk. But at the end of the day, hello, my name is Johnny. We're delivering a gift into the community. You put the book right into their hand, and then you explain the packet. You tell them about the health magazine, and then you can proceed to tell them about the great controversy. Now, today is going to be a little different because I think our main emphasis should be, you know, connecting on health, but inv uh, inviting people to the series. But um, if you want to explain the great controversy, you can say, in this packet, we, we have a, a book that's uh, a history of, excuse me, a blend of history and Bible prophecy. It shows how history proves the Bible to be true. Or you could say something like, we have a book, in the, uh, there's a book in this packet that helps answer life's toughest questions. Or you could say something like, this, uh, in this packet, there's a book called The Great Controversy. It helps people navigate through the great controversy of their own lives. Something simple. You, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to teach you what to say, okay? You don't have to memorize what I'm giving you, but the Lord will teach you what to say. And the main thing is that we want to let them know, because there's no hiding that this is a religious packet. I mean, it says God's last message of hope on the back. <laughs> so, you know, we want to really let people know that this is a sample packet that we're giving in the community. And if they want to get the real deal, they need to come to our meetings. This is just a sample packet. If they want the real deal, come to our evening meeting. Okay, it starts tonight. So I would say something like this, and I, you know, I, di I had, didn't have it in the presentation, but hello, my name is Johnny. We're delivering a gift into the community. You hand them the packet, and you can say, we're offering resources to help those who are struggling with um, depression, anxiety, or stress, and offering hope to people in the community. And tonight, we have a series that is meant to help people. It's called God's Less Message of Hope, and then you can, you know, tell them to look at the flyer for the information. So it's as simple as that. The Lord, I, you don't need a PhD to go door to door. The Lord will, uh, will use you when you go. But hello, my name is Johnny. We're delivering a gift into the community. You explain the packet. Tell them a little bit about, you know, the, the, the invitation. If they don't give you much time, you, you, don't worry. You don't have to run through every single thing. At the end of the day, because there's no hiding it, at least tell them, if they don't have much time, tell them about the series tonight, okay? Because remember the quote that we read. It's by evangelistic groups going out into the community during camp meeting that hundreds would come to camp meeting who otherwise would not have heard it. So let's stress that. Now, once someone receives the book, you tell them about it, I would encourage you to offer prayer. Offer prayer. And I want you to assume that they're interested 
Assume that they're interested in prayer. Don't, you know, usually we, we say, would, I, would you like me to pray for you? Or can I pray for you? I would encourage you to say something like this. Hey, I love praying with people. What would you like me to pray for? You know, in the canvas, they say, you know, this is how much it costs in a bookstore, and most of your neighbors have been helping with this. We accept cash, check, or card. Which works best for you? you they're assuming that the person is interested, but they don't really know if, if the, <laughs> at the end of the day if they're going to buy. It's the same thing with prayer. I love praying with people. What would you like me to pray for? You'll get your yes, your no, or I mean, you'll get your prayer request or your no, or you'll get that awkward situation where they didn't say no, they didn't say yes immediately. They don't know how, what, what to respond. Maybe they have never prayed. Maybe they haven't prayed with someone in a long time. But they're interested. So just offer something basic. Health, your family, the community, and you pray with them. Don't be afraid to pray. We're told that humble, fervent prayer does more on behalf of our circulation than all the expensive embellishments of the world. So prayer is the engine. Pray, we're going to pray before we go. Pray in your car. Pray before you go to the door. Pray with the people at the door and pray in between doors, okay? Don't for, be afraid to offer prayer. Now, as soon as you're done offering prayer, this is the last thing that I encourage you to do if, as the Holy Spirit leads and if there's time. You could say, uh, this is, um, you know, how to get a Bible study. Basically, after you pray, I would say, hey, you know what, before we go, we also offer free Bible studies online, in person, or through the mail. Which works best for you? You're still giving them opportunity to say no, but you're giving them three ways to say yes. Amen? I'm telling you, we have done this all around the country. And two months ago, I'll share more in, in our uh, uh, training and seminar tomorrow. In one week, we got 720 Bible study contacts in Lansing, Michigan, using this method. A lot of people say no to Bible studies because they think the only option is in person, but that doesn't always mean that they're not interested. They could be going through a divorce, they could, their house could be cluttery, and they're, maybe they're embarrassed, or maybe their schedule is unpredictable and they just don't want to let you down. But there's other ways that we can study with them. So if they are interested, all you need to do, I would pull out your phone, scan this QR code if you can, if your phone is giving you too much trouble, don't worry about it. You can just put it in your phone notes or on a piece of paper. Don't worry. But basically, if you have this on your phone, it's going to ask you for their name, number, email, their address, and if they're interested in person, online, or through the mail. Okay? Now, not everyone's going to give you their number and email, both. But just gather what you can, and it doesn't matter what they sign up for. Online, in person, and through mail, always, always, always get their address. Always, okay? And so you, this is what the form looks like: name, email, number, address, type of study, what language are they, and then you can put some notes. If they, you can ask them, hey, on a scale of one to ten, really, how interested are you? And if they tell you a ten, great, put it down in the notes. If they tell you a three, great, put it down in the notes. That will help people to know when they follow up with them, um, you know, who to prioritize. So um, if you can't scan the QR code, no worries. I'll leave it on the screen here in a, here in a minute. Um, but if it doesn't work for your phone, no worries. Just put in your notes or write it down on a piece of paper and turn it in here. We'll turn it into the conference here uh, when we get back. So, hey, before I go, we also offer free Bible studies. We do them online, in person, or through the mail, which works best for you. So, hey, my name is Johnny. We're delivering a gift into the community. Put the book in their hand. You tell them about the packet. This, we're offering free resources on mental health or, you know, uh, on health in general. And we have, this is a sample packet for a series that we have going on this week called God's Last Message of Hope. I would hope that, um, I would like to invite you personally and hope that you can come. Oh, okay, great. Awesome. Hey, you know what? Before I go, I love praying with people. What would you like me to pray for? You pray with them. And then you can see as the Spirit leads to ask and offer for Bible studies. Because some people may say, well, I can't come to the meeting tonight, but I'm really interested. Okay, no problem. We can follow up with Bible studies online, in person, or through mail. So, friends, this is the crash course, how to share the three angels' messages in 30 seconds, all right? Some people will give, won't give you the day or time, uh, but some people will. And I know that he has divine appointments for us. So, what we're going to do now... I know that there might be some questions, but we're battling against time. 
So if anything, you're just giving away a free gift. And if you don't have time or you forget everything else, leave it at that and invite them to come this evening. Amen? And pray with them if you can. So we're going to pray. But before we go, before we pray, I want to tell you what's going to happen. So I have Eric. Eric's there in the back. We have tables on this side right over here full of books. And what's going to happen is we have territory that we have set apart for every single um, fam, uh, every single pair here. I want you to think of a partner that you can go out with. We're going to assign people in pairs, uh, in pairs of two, and we're going to give you maps based on pairs of two. Each uh, pair, Eric, do you know how many people we have in here? 22. Great. Each pair is going to take one box of books. Does that make sense? Except for the canvassers, we have a special thing for you. But each um, pair will have one box of books, and so what's going to happen is after we pray, you, you, I want you to have your partner come over here. Eric's going to meet you, and he's going to give you your map for you and your group. You can grab your box and then load it into your vehicle. If you don't have a backpack, that's fine. Our bags you can typically carry about 10 or so in each hand, and you'll just have to park in such a way, or you and your partner. I mean, there's 50 books in a box. Between you and your partner, you can have most of the box in your hands, but just you'll have to park in such a way that you can reload if you run out quickly, okay? Yes, if people don't know the address, it's here on the flyer, I believe. Yes, yes. Mm. Yes. If you forget everything, it's right here on the flyer. If you forget today's date, no problem. If you forget the time, no problem. If you forget the address, no problem. It's all here for you, okay? So if they have any questions, you could just they can you could point it to them on the flyer. So you'll get your partner, you'll meet Eric here on the side, he'll get you your map, grab your box of books, and then you load up in your car. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go ahead and pray. And then I'll let you guys grab your uh, partner. Once you have your partner, go to Eric, and he'll get you loaded from there. And then we'll, uh, supper is at 5.30. Come back. Um, we're scheduled to come back by 5.15. Stay out as long as you want or need. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Lord, I know, <laughs> I know that this was a crash course. But, Lord, I know so much can be done in this short amount of time. And this week, Lord, you have set it up in such a way that the rest of the week will have advanced training and deeper training and longer time for training. But today you have given us just what we need to get our feet wet. We may be nervous, but fill us with the Holy Spirit. Give us that love that overpowers fear and anxiety. And Lord, please give us divine appointments. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Grab your partner. You can meet Eric. He'll get you your maps and get your books. God bless you.